Okay. Woo! I have not recorded a video in a minute. It has been so long. Oh, I think the lighting is perfect right now, so it's good. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to my channel. It has been a good minute since I recorded on my YouTube. I hope you guys have great holidays, you know, good Christmas, a great start to the new year, you know, since last year was just definitely something. So as you can tell by the title, I am finally going to talk about what happened to me last year. And yes, I was uh, carjacked at gunpoint. So that was that was fun. Before I start the video, I did want to like take a break from YouTube for a minute and just like just reflect what happened last year. Just just to, just breathe. <laughs> You know, it's just, it's been so much and I'm not just taking it as like a personal thing. I know a lot of people took it hard last year and I definitely am one of those people. And um, I feel like I am ready to like talk about what happened. And I, I'm sure a lot of people might have a lot of like questions as to like how things roll out. Um, I'm sure if some of you guys have me on Facebook or even if you didn't and you saw that I shared my story on, on social media, well, Facebook clearly. And that thing blew up. That thing went viral. I did not expect to get so much attention to it. I got a lot of, I got both positive, majority positive and some negative comments to, to what happened to me. So, yeah, I want to address it because I think I should talk about how it, it did, it did not, it, the purpose was not to make it go in a negative way just because of the people who did it. Like that was not the whole point of the post. I just really wanted to bring out awareness because where it happened is a town where I grew up in. So I didn't I didn't want it to go that route at all, by any means, no. If the people did it, they did it, you know? What, what am I gonna do, you know? Like I'm not gonna like sit here and just be like, I wish it were somebody else or because of their skin color, they did this to me. Like that's, no, no. They did it, young kids, what? A, it sucks. It just, it went the other way around. But on the other side, I did get a lot of positive people, you know, just praying for me and just hoping for the best and hopefully, and thank, you know, thanking God that things didn't go the other way because they really could have. Oh my God, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. And that thing blow, that just, that thought blows my mind. I guess now that being said and being done, let's get right into the story. Okay, I'm doing this on one shot. I've recorded this video before. I really thought he was going to shoot right there and then. And I remember just, just going down and just covering my head and just hoping he wouldn't shoot. And I was just... I was scared for my life and for my boyfriend's life. And it was just messy. I was just like, oh my God, what's happening to you? I was just like crying the whole video. And it was just gross. And I'm like, okay, no, I think I should wait and, sit and just like be able to like actually talk and tell you guys what happened because it was just so, the experience alone was just so traumatic and it was just unbelievable. It was just hard to process, you know, like, Oh my god. So I did get my car last year, which is crazy. Like I thought I was like, yes, at least something good happened to me. Like I'm finally be able to, you know, pay buy, like on my own, my own car. Like I really needed a new car. I miss my old truck, but I really needed a car. And so I was like, yes, oh my god, yes. Hey guys, sorry if I'm interrupting this video. Um, I might do that a couple of times just because as I'm editing this, I realize that I missed out on a couple of details. So as for now, um, yeah, I do want to mention that I do own a 2020 Honda Civic. And um, I got my car in May of 2020. And by the time of this incident happened, it had been like five months since I've gotten my car. So yeah, getting my car was definitely super recent. So anyways, back to the video. So I'm still really excited. So anyways, we're going to start off with what happened to my car <laughs> and what happened to me and my boyfriend. So it was, um, it was just a regular Friday night. I had the idea of like, let's go out to eat, you know, or was it that way? I'm pretty sure it was that way. It was either my idea or my boyfriend's idea to go out to eat that night. And uh, I was like, let's go, you know, whatever. So we go out to eat. Uh, we went to Chili's 
and okay let me just place the setting where this happened it did not happen at Chili's by the way so um this was in uh it's called uh Cicero and then next to Cicero it's like Berwyn and then next to Berwyn there's North Riverside so let's just call them A, B, and C so you guys have an idea of where these towns and how they're next to each other you know so I was in town C you know and my boyfriend lives in town A or used to live in town A so um yeah, we went out to eat. Everything was fine. Uh, we were thinking of going to a different restaurant just because Chili's was really packed. And um, we were like, oh, should we just go somewhere else? Like, it's going to be here forever. They, I think they said like an hour wait. But we're like, nah, it's going to take like forever to drive some other place. Like, let's just let's just wait here. Who cares? So we did. We ate yummy food, whatever. So we did. And um, my boyfriend didn't have... No, he did have his car. We just decided to go in my car. At this point, like, it didn't really matter whether we went in my car or his car. We went in my car. So, um, I was driving him back to his house, which is from town C, skipping B, going to town A, where he lives. And, um, yeah, it was like, I'm gonna say it was like 9.50. No, I'm lying. I'm lying. 9.50 was when we probably were eating at the restaurant. It was like... I think 10.30. I think it was like 10.30 when we left the restaurant. And I was trying to drive him back to his house. Um, from that point, I was just going to drop him off and come back to my house, you know? End of the night. Whatever. Oh, so, as I'm getting closer to his house, um, everything was fine. Like, I didn't see anyone around the area that seemed suspicious. Like, I... I've gone to his house so many times, of course, that we just never thought it was something like that could happen, you know? So, um, we were getting closer to his house and uh, it was like a parking spot right outside his house where there's a fire hydrant right there. So technically you're not supposed to park there, but let me just, uh, let me just paint this picture where it's like literally like a super like narrow street where there's park, like park cars on both sides and it's only a one way street. Okay. So even if I tried to escape, there was no way of that happening. And I decided to park in that fire hydrant to say, you know, goodbye to Bay or whatever. See you next time. And just stay out of, out of the traffic, you know. So uh, as I was parking the car, you know, my boyfriend was talking. And that moment, it was like 1040. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to remember the time. It was like 1040, 48 maybe. Yeah, I think it was like 48 or something like that. And uh, funny enough, it's like my mom always knows when something bad is going to happen to me. It's just, it's just freaking crazy. So she texts me asking me if I'm almost on my way home or if I'm going home. She texts me and she was like, oh, you know, are you coming home or whatever? Are you almost on your way home? And um, I'm finishing up parking, you know, and I have my phone sitting on the dashboard. So I have... um my phone sitting on the dashboard and I have a phone holder where it's holding my phone as I'm reading that and I'm parking at the same time listening to my boyfriend you know not being aware of my surroundings at all so this happened so fast by the way like we were not sitting in the car not even for like a minute okay so as soon as I like you know parking myself really good like it was a pretty tight space I shift to park, right? And I had this sense of like urgency to just like look to my left, right, like my left mirror. And I don't know why, it was a completely like, it couldn't, didn't, from that moment on, I couldn't just pay attention to my boyfriend, what he was saying anymore. So I turn to my mirror and I see this guy walking. Oh, I get the chills just like thinking about it, you know? I see this guy walking super fast, like super fast, and he's getting closer to my car. So this guy was walking like super fast, and I was I could not say a word to my boyfriend. And um, he gets to next to my car, and he starts banging on my window with a gun. Yes, he took out the gun. He did not waste any time. Went straight to the point, and I was like, oh my god, I. <laughs> just thinking about it just like falls in mind i really thought he was gonna shoot right there and then i really thought this kid was gonna shoot at us right there and then like not caring i really thought he was just gonna that was his whole pur purpose i didn't i did not cross my mind that he wanted to take my car so when he started banging on the window with the gun i could just i remember just hearing my boyfriend like yelling at him like hey what do you want like what are you doing like come on like are you serious like and I, I, I was just shaking. I, I was like, are, are you serious? Is this really happening to me right now? Like, 
is this happening to us like what do we do like in those type of situations you just don't know what to do you know and um oh i also forgot to mention that my mom texted me right so my mom had texted me and i grabbed my i reached my phone and that's when i look at the mirror that's a really good point because they ended up stealing my boyfriend's phone and not mine but that's because i grabbed my phone and i was going to reply to my mom and as soon as he banged the window i just i, I just put my phone in my pocket like as of like, I don't know, as if it was like, I knew I was going to need my phone to call the cops or something. Like, I don't know. It was just so weird. So anyways, um, my phone somehow ended up in my back pocket and I had a jacket on, you know? So, um, so yeah, so as he was banging the window, I was like losing my goddamn mind. I was just like, oh my God, are you serious? Like, what do we do? Like, I looked at my boyfriend, like, what do I do? Like, I don't want to give him my car. He kept saying, the guy kept saying, get off the car, get off the car. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, it's my baby. And I was like, no. You know, I was like losing my mind. I was losing my mind. I'm like, guys, I'm like shaking just telling this story. <laughs> oh my God. It's like, it was really traumatizing, okay? It was just... It was just really bad. So thank God my boyfriend kept his calm and he kept his cool because I would have I would have done probably anything to like not get them get away with it, you know. So my boyfriend, uh, he's like keeping his calm and he tells me he's like, hey, you know, use your life or lose the car. At that point, he was right. Either I lose my car or lose my life. And at that point, it was just a car. I had insurance and everything. I knew the car could, was going to be okay. But at the same time, it was just the ex experience. And I was like, no, no, like, this is not happening. I'm sitting on the floor. So if you guys see me moving, I'll, I'll probably feel kind of uncomfortable. So anyway, so that was happening. And um, let me move the camera a little more down. There we go. Oh, so much better. Okay. So the car was parked. Um, I didn't think about turning it off or anything. What's funny is that I was going to stop by to put gas to my car after, so I had no gas. <laughs> I know, sounds like me. It sounds like me, okay? I do that a lot. Sorry, Dad. Anyway, so the car had no gas, and I was going to stop by the gas station afterwards. So this kid was literally going to have to drive to the gas station literally right at that minute because it was, like, about to say, you know, feed me or whatever. So I'm trying to, like process where i'm going next to the story so once this kid is like knocking on the door i was like okay fine let's get off so my boyfriend got off on the other side and it was two kids okay two kids and i say kids because these kids could have been literally like 16 17 year old there was no way they were older than 18 maybe there was no way so i got off the car and i look at the this kid in the eye and i and I'm like, oh my God, this kid could be like 16. I was like, I look at him, I'm like trying to be a little tough, you know, whatever. Like, are you being serious right now? Are you really doing this right now? Like, come on, like seriously, like, come on. And then <laughs> I guess that was not a good idea because then he pointed the gun to my face. Yeah, he really did pointed the gun to my face. And just thinking about me, like, I don't even want to, I, I can't help but think about it, you know, I think about it all the time, what if that was my, my, my time, what if that was my time, and it wasn't, you know, so, whew, I thought I could tell this story better, but I guess the tears keep rolling down my cheeks, you know, because it was just really, really bad, one thing I do want to, you know, keep this very clear is that I do not hate this kid, or what he did to me i just i just don't i was the reason why it wasn't my time is because god has something else for me and i know but it was just the idea that that could have been i could have been on the news again uh you know someone being shot on the random street just for a freaking material like just for a car it's it's really sad okay and especially you know i just i feel so bad for this kid that like it's just it's just crazy you know so anyway so i was like okay as soon as he pointed the gun to my face like okay fine 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 after you you know <laughs> go right ahead i move on the side and um he gets on the car and on the other side my boyfriend is like you know grabbing his stuff and whatever and the other kid that was with him tells him no drop everything drop everything drop it get off the car you know so 
my boyfriend was grabbing his keys, his wallet, his phone, and nope, they're like, no, drop it all. So they took it with him. And I also had my wallet in my car, but it was in my bag, in the back seat. But they also took that. So they asked for the keys and whatever, and I gave him the keys, and um, I got off the car, and I was having the craziest deja vu, guys. I'm not kidding you. I was, I swear, I was reliving the dream that I had two days before that incident. Oh yeah, I had a dream that I stole, that someone stole my car. So I had a dream that this was two days before they stole my car. And I remember telling my sister about it. So she know she knows I was not kidding. Cause I told her about my dream literally like that same day that I had dreamt, dreamt about it that night. So I had a dream that, um, that I was dashing because I, I used to dash as a side hustle, you know, so I used, I used to dash and now I don't anymore because, you know, whatever. Anyway, so I had a dream that I was dashing and I was dropping, I was dropping an order off to this lady and my car, of course. And um, I got off the car, closed the door behind me and I remember going up these stairs to her house, give, give the order to the lady and as I turn around, my car's gone. And I was like, oh my God, someone just stole my car. Someone just stole my car. So I remember calling the cops or actually I remember telling, asking the lady like, hey, you know, did you see someone take my car? Like, I think someone just took my car. The lady was like, no, I didn't see no one take your car. Anyway, so I remember calling the cops and um, I called the cops and they're like coming over and whatever. And the cop turned out to be my dad. I swear, dreams, you just don't know where they're going. It's just the most random thing ever. Like, how is my dad the cop? Like, that's so weird. But anyways, my dad turned out to be the cop. And I'm telling my dad, like, hey, dad, they just stole my car. Like, oh, my God, do something, you know? And then my dad was, like, super chill. He was like, oh, oh well, it's gone. And I was like, what do you mean it's gone? Like, do something, you know? Like, aren't you, aren't you a cop? It was so weird. I was, It was all my dream, okay? Again, this is all a dream. So my dad's like, no, this is what you get, Yossi. You're so responsible. Like, no, forget it. You lost your car and your car's gone. And I remember waking up and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, if I ever get my car stolen, I would freaking die. <laughs> Not kidding you. Two days later, I literally get my car stolen. So going back to my story, I know it's insane. I just, I still can't believe it sometimes, okay? So two days later, right, get my car actually stolen real life so as i get off the car and these kids are inside my car i fall to the ground like i completely lost balance and i completely collapsed and i was just like having the worst deja vu and i like i couldn't breathe for like a good like for a good second and i just remember like oh my god oh my god i had a dream about this there's no way this is happening right now i was like Oh my god, I, I just had a dream they stole my car, but anyways, that was just in my mind, okay? I didn't even tell my boyfriend that. My boyfriend ran, um, so again, this incident happened right outside his house, okay? Literally, right up front. So his house, fire hydrant, my car. So you can just imagine if someone just randomly steals your car outside your house. Like, oh, that's, it's freaking insane. So, um, uh, my boyfriend, uh, knocks on the door to his landlord, because his landlord lived, uh, two floors on top of him. And um, he's knocking on the door asking for help, you know. Hey, sorry guys, I'm interrupting again. I am kind of forgot to mention or more of like giving a shout out to uh, Crispy's old landlord, um, which is actually one of my friends, uh, Juanita's dad. Hi, Juanita. Um, anyways, I want to give him a quick shout out. He was super supportive. He was, he ran out right away, right outside and was just like offering help and just being like, I don't know, just being super supportive, you know, as of like, as of like my dad were there, you know, like he was just super kind. He uh, had us go in and had the cops go in and everything else took place there. Like the police report, everything just took place upstairs in um, my old, my boyfriend's old landlord house. Yeah. Anyways, quick shout out to him. He was super sweet. So yeah. Anyways, moving on to the video. Oh, cause he, he obviously didn't have his phone. And then I realized I have my phone. So right there in that second, I'm calling the cops. And um, I just remember I couldn't really explain the situation because, again, I was in shock. And I was just like, I was like telling him, they stole my car. Oh, my God, they stole my car. Like, And the lady's like, okay, but where, when, who, what, you know, all these questions. And I was like, 
oh my god they stole my car <laughs> you know i just i couldn't tell the freaking lady about you know reporting that a crime just happened you know so my boyfriend took over and he was you know making the report and having the cops come over and and all what all this is happening okay this has been like at least at least almost like three five minutes maybe the most and these kids are still sitting in my car they haven't even drove off yet and we we're already calling the cops knocking on his on my boyfriend's landlord to open the door all this and these kids are still sitting in my car I felt like they didn't know how to drive a car or something. It broke my heart it just seeing my car drive off and not being able to do anything about it. Like, it was really heartbreaking, okay? Like, it's like, oh my god, I just got this car this year and this is already happening. Like, wow, wow. I was like, wow. <laughs> The cops came and um, my car is gone at that point and they're taking a report and I'm calling my dad telling him what just happened just talking to him made me cry even more it made it seem because I couldn't believe it still at that point and I just remember like calling him and telling him like dad guess what and my dad's like whoa well, he, he already sounded worried like he already had a bad feeling and I was like they just they just stole my car dad and he just he couldn't believe it either but he was just more concerned as to if we were okay thank goodness we were okay because things really could have played out different you know i'm making the report with the police and they're just you know taking as much as information as they can as to who did it and how it happened how long were you guys in the car and i'm telling you we were not in the car not even for a minute okay while driving and parking like we were not sitting there not for a minute literally this thing happened so fast that I still couldn't be, like I, I couldn't believe all of this happened in literally like less than a second. Like your life can really change in a second. When people say that, it actually happens and that oh my and not that I didn't believe it, but really like shit man, like shit really does change in less than a second. Like it's freaking insane. So as I'm talking to the cops, my boyfriend's talking to the cops and we're trying to give as much as information as we can to them, you know. Literally that same second they get another report that another truck like a block or two blocks away was stolen. Same, carjacked, rather say. It was carjacked, same thing. Like we were like, what is going on? Oh my God, what is going on? Like the sister of cops, they were super nice and everything. They were like, yeah, unfortunately it's been happening a lot in Cicero and it's it just sucks so that happened my dad came for me my boyfriend stayed over of course he was his place already and thankfully i got my car back so this happened on october 23rd i should probably said that in the beginning of the story time it was october 23rd on a friday and um they i got my car back on halloween which is the 31st funny enough or the day after halloween i'm sorry maybe the first yeah it was the first it wasn't a sunday i think it was it was on the first yeah so I guess it was less than a week I got my car back. Um, bef during the week though, um, it was just really hard for me. It was just really hard to just like, just, just process and just, you know, just, just accept what it was and what it is. It was just really hard for me. And not only that, but just thinking of how things could have played out differently for me and my boyfriend just really like broke me really bad. You know, I got a lot of people thinking, you know, I was looking for it, especially from some of my family members, not trying to throw shade out there. But um, things do happen to people, unfortunately, and I wish it really doesn't happen to anyone. Really, this experience was just so freaking crazy to me. I felt so violated. I, during that week, it was just, it just a lot of tears. Every day, lots of nightmares. It was... Uh, I was very paranoid. I'm still paranoid to this day. So I guess I do suffer some kind of like PTSD whenever I go out or I'm in my car. Like I can help um, just freak out when someone's near my car and I don't know them. Um, thankfully, my boyfriend moved out, of course, since that incident happened. I Everyone convinced him and he, obviously he knew it was the right thing to do. So yeah he does not live there anymore if, if anyone's concerned yeah he doesn't live there anymore um and that week was just it was just terrible for both of us you know it was just really terrible um thank goodness i had my family support and without them honestly i wouldn't know if i would have been able to like you know make it through 
because it was just really emotionally it was just really bad for me it was really bad okay going back to the story of how i got my car back because i did get my car back and it's also a really funny story. This one's a funny story. The first one is not a funny story, but this is a pretty funny story as to how they found my car and the condition it was found in. So, hey guys, sorry if I'm interrupting again. I completely forgot to mention how they found my car. So, um, my car was located in South Side, somewhere in the South Side in Chicago. Um, and Chicago police was just randomly taking down plates in a random street and when they took down my plates from my car because they never took off my plates which is a very good important point which I'm actually glad that way they found my car a lot faster so uh, Chicago police was just taking down plates and when they took mine it was reported as a stolen vehicle so the Chicago police contacted uh, the sister of police which is the town where it was stolen from and yeah that's how they found in my car so funny story <laughs> They found my car, I get a call the next day after Halloween, right? And it was uh, the cop that took care of my case, you know? And he called, he's like, oh, hey, you know, we found your car. I need you to come in and, um, you know, identify the items that are in the car, whether they're yours or not. And just, you know, let us know the condition of the car. You know, you know your car, you know, you must know what's in it and what's not, okay? So, okay, sure, sounds good. So that same day, me and my boyfriend went, we got there and yeah we go to they have like a little garage in the police department right and that's where they had the car we go in and i look at the car and it broke my heart because uh thank goodness it was not damaged it had a couple of damages yes and thankfully the insurance covered m most of those damages so anyways uh we go in look at my car and the first thing i noticed was the tints yes they added tints to my car, guys. <laughs> okay, this is really funny because I never heard such a thing. And every time I tell this to somebody, they're like, what? Like, what? What kind of thieves steal a car and then add more, more value to it? It's really weird. I'm looking at the car and I tell my boy, I whispered to my boyfriend, I'm like, hey, they put tints on my car. And my boyfriend was like, they put tints on the car. I was like, yes, I did not have any tints on the car, okay? So I told the cops, I was like, so they put tints on my car? And the cops like, huh, really? They're not yours? You didn't put those on there? I'm like, no. So it turns out they left the receipt in there. Okay, this, this, I'm gonna get onto that. So anyways, they left the receipt that they wasted $200 worth of tints. <laughs> Sorry guys, I am interrupting for the last time, I promise. Um, I also forgot to mention that they left a lot of evidence, okay, inside my car um not only mm, sperm evidence as you will find out the more you watch this video but um they did left uh that receipt that i just mentioned uh for the tints which is which was 200 dollars, the location and everything where they got it from they left that they had already had a court date of whatever else they might have must have done so they were already in trouble for another crime or whatever they've done and they already had to appear in court in on december 16th i'm not sure if they did or not not my problem but they left that paper in there they went to a funeral in my car and they had left like a like a what is it like a flyer maybe i think it was like a flyer of the funeral of the person who passed away and uh yeah they have left that they have left uh they went to the hospital they have left the medical bills inside my car too they just left everything as much as like evidence as anyone could have loved like name address you know everything in there so the fact that the cops have still not catch these guys is freaking insane but yeah that's the last thing i wanted to mention so was evidence found in my car oh you bet you bet so anyways on to the video that's pretty funny but what's also funny is that every the car was fine. The only thing they broke was a side mirror. And here's a little clip on how I found the condition of the car. Sorry if you guys can see me a mess. So this is what the car looks like. Um, again, they added the tints. As you can see, it's really hard to see inside of them. Because they literally put the darkest tints they got. And um, other than that, the car looks really good. They didn't really do much damage to it. But... As you can see, the mirror is like completely like broken, which is so freaking weird. 
scratches on my rims. I guess these people did not know how to park. So, yeah, that's that's the current situation. And same for this tire right there. As you can see, they did that too. So, so let me show you guys the inside. So the inside is pretty good. Um. Uh, the button was loose, but I found it while I was cleaning it. As you can, as you guys can see, it's all clean and stuff. It smells really good in here. On the bright side, everything is good. It's just that one mirror right there. So yeah, that was how they how I found my car. You know, um, so as I'm looking more through it, the the window's broken. Um, there's a little like scratches on the rims. It looks like they were having a hard time parking the car. They opened the doors and. There's a lot of like iPhone chargers in the back seat. Mm. So they opened the the door from the back seat and there was a bra. A bra. Yeah. Ew. And there was uh I think a jacket in there too. And my stuff was like literally everywhere. I had my book bag with my notebooks and my wallet. All of that stuff was found in the trunk. They opened the trunk. And they found a pair of pants in there. How did a pair of pants end up in there? I don't know. But it was like leather pants. And obviously it was a male's pants. And then obviously the bra. Girl, whatever. What am I saying? Anyway, so they found the bra. And obviously there was a little stain on the back seat, Which obviously is taken care of now. But. Oh my god. I was like grossed out. I was like. They just. They just. They just do a little yummy yummy in my car. Like, did they really just do the yummy yummy in my car? It was so grossed out. Like, me and my boyfriend were both grossed out. Like, are you... Oh, my God. It was freaking gross, okay? It was just... Mm, mm. In that moment, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to drive my car the same again. Like, oh, my God. They did so much to it in literally less than a week. I guess there's a reason why they wanted the tents on my car, right? Gross. As I'm like looking at the car, they take they take my fingerprints and they're like keeping the car for like a day or two, I believe. They're like, hey, we're going to take as much DNA as possible so that we can, you know, find these guys. And, you know, if we take your DNA as well, like, or like your fingerprints, we're, we're going to be able to like notice, um, you know, that obviously you were there, your boyfriend was there. So yeah, I got my car back and yeah, uh, they still have not catch those kids, you know. I did went to a couple photo lineups with my boyfriend. I think it was like three times already that we've gone to the police station because they have photo lineups that they want us to try to identify these kids. But I feel like I could probably identify the kid that, that was on my side because he was not wearing a mask. Um, the kid that was on my boyfriend's side was wearing a mask. That's that's my story, you know. It's been crazy. It's been really crazy. Um, so yeah, for those of you, please be careful out there. I have, I have a lot of family and friends that still live out there, and yeah, just be careful out there. You know, it's just crazy. It could happen to anyone. It could have happened anywhere. And, you know, it's been a lot of people have been going crazy just due to the pandemic alone. Like it's just, it's crazy out there. So please be careful. Be aware of your surroundings. Um, I hope my experience and my story helps you know, helps you guys to, you know, stay aware. <sighs> I'm trying to be better. I'm not going to lie. It's been really hard for me. One time, me and my sister were at the mall and I had just parked. And this lady was walking super fast next to my car. But that's because if you can imagine in the parking lot, there's a lot of cars everywhere, whatever. She was just passing by. That alone, seeing that lady freaked me out, okay? I started crying. Ryan and my sister's like dude oh like it's gonna happen all over again and uh, you know it's just situations like that it makes it so hard for somebody to like go you know go back to normal but it's really hard like I feel like that sense of like safety or that sense of security was taken away from me now I know things are gonna get better I hope it gets better you know and I hope uh, this is just an experience that I could just be that I'm thankful to God that I'm able to like tell my story out there but yeah it is what it is guys and <laughs> i say that all the time which is funny but anyways it is what it is it was what it was and i'm just more grateful this year i'm just more grateful that i'm able to tell this story and i can look back and just 
<sighs> just breathe, okay? Nothing happened. I'm go I'm fine. My boyfriend's fine. I got my car back. Like we're we're okay. Thank God, I'm healthy. I, I hope I'm healthy, but uh, everything's fine. Everything's good. You know, it's it's just crazy stuff, guys. I don't I don't wish it upon anyone. But anyways, I guess it's the end of my story. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed hearing me out and i hope it answered most of your questions for anyone who may have had any questions and i hope my story just like you know give you guys more like awareness as to being more careful out there and you know being aware of your surroundings because stuff like this does happen unfortunately and it's just it's insane they already catch those guys or not i'm pretty sure the cops are gonna let me know i'm yeah they're, they're definitely gonna let me know i just want justice to happen to do its thing you know that that's all i ask for but for now it's just just being careful out there okay guys so i know this is a pretty like negative video i guess you can say they're starting off my my year telling a, a really like sad story but i just I, I felt like i had to address it and i felt like i had to talk about it but things are taken care of now and uh things are good thank god i feel so grateful right now you know this year is gonna be great I have lots of exciting things coming up for me and for my boyfriend and just so much so much things to look forward to so that's all i gotta say so anyways thank you so much for watching my channel thank you so much for watching this video please go ahead if you guys like this story um give it a thumbs up comment down below and yeah of course subscribe to the channel thank you so much for sticking around i'll see you guys in my next video bye